Next question is from Pamber is great. What do you feel was your best traits that gave you the most success in personal training? Yeah, I love this one because we're all a little different. Yeah. All of us are a little different, and I could say that all of us were uh, successful uh, personal trainers. Um, I can, I'm going to speak personally, and then I think I'll talk about what I think the general, what makes trainers across the board uh, successful. Um, but the, the, for me personally, I really enjoy uh, communicating with people. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I also genuinely love people. I find people fascinating. I love talking and discussing and watching and listening people. I think they're the most fascinating thing in the world. Uh, I, I, and so personal training for me was so fun because I would train, you know, six to eight, sometimes 10 different people a day. And I would ask them questions about their jobs and their families and their opinions. And we would get in wonderful discussions and debates. And it was so stimulating for me. And I think that they found it enjoyable as well. And that was a great trait because most people, here's the hard truth. Most people don't genuinely find exercise enjoyable like I do or like, you know, Adam or Justin do. Like I love just the working out. I just love the way it feels. Even if it didn't give me any any strength or calorie burn or whatever, I would do it anyway. I just love the way it feels. Most people don't find it, you know, inherently enjoyable. They don't necessarily like the pain. They kind of learn to respect it and enjoy it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they the clients would show up, um, and I know this. They would tell me. Oftentimes they'd show up because they loved hanging out with me while I trained them. And we'd have these, so I knew that that was a trait that that helped me a lot because when people were thinking to themselves, oh, I don't want to go to the gym, but you yeah. know, I like I like seeing Sal, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go show up. Yeah, it was definitely a personality thing for me on some level, uh, just being able to connect with with people on a deep level, but also to make it fun and enjoyable experience for them. That was something that I definitely leaned heavy on, but also my journey specifically, I would always try to relate with each one of my clients in terms of what I was struggling with, with my kids, with my wife, like whatever was going on in my life. There's a lot of parallels that people share. And that was always something I was trying to find that opportunity to, you know, at least like paint the picture of like how I was tackling a lot of these issues or problems going on with me personally, but also my journey of learning and uh, going off and, and learning new concepts and uh, uh, basically like going into these like certifications and then bringing back uh, materials and idea and testing them on them, getting their feedback. They love to be involved with my learning curve and my learning journey uh, and and they reap the benefits of that. And so then we'd, we'd find ones that had uh, you know, relevance uh, with them personally. And I could, I could really tailor in uh, these workouts then based off of like, they come in how they feel, they they tell me how they feel, like what's going on with their body. And I would adjust everything uh, specifically with them based off of our communication. So that was, I mean, those two things, just, you know, making it an enjoyable experience and also like uh, that they knew that I was always like trying to get better. I think that even though Sal mentioned that we're all so different, there's there's a, a common theme here uh, for sure with all of us. Like uh, I, two two traits come into mind uh, for me, and and one of them I think that's very similar to you guys is that you know as a kid growing up, I remember um, you know I I had a, a a lot of different friends. I and I and I, of all my my really really close friends, I was the only one that kind of like hung out with all the different groups. Like I had mm -hmm. people that you would just not think that were in, that were part of my clique or that were like me that I was friends with. I was, I had this ability to be a chameleon. I could be in different settings and with different types of people and get along with them and appreciate them. And I liked them. And a lot of this, I just, I liked people. I liked meeting new people. I found them interesting. Even if we had polar opposite political views and religious views and thoughts on life and philosophy. Like I, I was interested. I was genuinely interested in, in people like that. And that, and it, that started at a young age for me and it served me well in personal training. So I think that, uh, that was a big one. The other thing that I think really served me as a personal trainer was I was able to understand really complex ideas and communicate that in layman's terms. I was able to mm -hmm. read the studies. I was able to read all the all the the nutrition uh, information that we were getting bombarded with. I was able to to take that 
And then I could communicate that to my clients in much simpler concepts that they could take and then apply into their life. And, you know, early on, I didn't know a lot. I didn't have a lot of information. I wasn't extremely well read in my early 20s when I first started personal training. So I didn't have a ton of these super complex concepts. But what I was good at, it was taking the one or two things that I did learn and disseminating that down to the most valuable information that I could provide for my clients and getting them to apply it in their life. Those two things probably serve me the most at being successful. Yeah. So, you know, we've all worked with a lot of trainers. Um, You know, I I don't know how many I've worked with, but I've worked with quite a few. And then out of those people I've worked with, I've worked with some that were very successful. There was one commonality among all of the successful ones uh, besides a passion for people and fitness. I think that's automatic prerequisite. You got to have a passion for people and for fitness. You just won't last. Uh, personal training, you'll you'll hate it. If you don't like people, you'll hate it. Believe me, you, you got to work. Yeah. You know, most eight hour a day jobs give you the break to be by yourself or, you know, have some quiet time. You're training eight clients a day, you're on all the whole time. You're on all eight hours and it's different people. And if you don't love people, you'll get annoyed real quick. I've seen it happen a ton of times. Mm -hmm. So of course you got to love people and love fitness. So that's a prerequisite. But there's one thing that I saw that all successful trainers had, whether they were loud and charismatic or quiet and, and consistent and you know, functional focused or strength focused or male or female, doesn't matter. There's one thing that they all, all the successful trainers had in common. And that was, were they truly influential? Okay. Were they truly influential to their clients? Were they able to communicate effectively on a regular basis to the person? Because consider what you're trying to do as a personal trainer. You're not just trying to train them when they come see you. You, you know, if they train, if they see you three days a week, that's three hours out of the entire week. I don't know how many hours there are uh, in a week, but there's a lot. And if they just saw you for an hour three times a week and then did nothing else and changed nothing else, you're not really successful. And then if you ever stop training them for whatever reason and then they go back to doing what they were doing before completely, you failed. You failed as a trainer. So the successful successful ones were the ones that got good clients, got a lot of clients, but also the ones that caused their clients to change fundamental things about their behaviors how they ate, how they were active, how they viewed their bodies. And let me tell you what that takes. That takes effective, consistent, influential communication. You are literally a salesperson the entire time you're training your client. I don't mean selling them like products and personal training. I mean selling them concepts and ideas and how you can get them to understand what they need to do and also buy in to what they need. Because you're telling somebody who's eaten a particular way for their whole life. And by the way, the way you eat is a big part of who you are. You're telling them to change a part of who they are forever. You know how hard that is? Mm-hmm. That takes, and I, when I, it takes years of effective communication, not one session, but rather years of doing this. And it took me a long time to be able to get really good at that to the point where I saw people get permanent results. So all the successful trainers that I know, whether, and it, it, you know, it, again, you look at uh, Adam, Justin, and myself, and if you saw us in gyms, you'd see some differences. And you know, Justin's very different than I am in, in terms of how we present ourselves. But he was extremely successful. He was also very effective at getting at being influential with our, with his clients. So that's the I would say the number one thing uh, that you should focus on if you want to be a successful uh, trainer.